Right, everyone, thanks for joining. So my name is Alex, um, technical sales manager at AST. Um, so today we're going to do an introduction to Bluebeam's new subscription model, um, the new product, what it looks like and what it gives you access to, what's changing and what it means for everyone as well. Um, we'll have a section at the end to have some questions and answers, so feel free to pop them in the chat as you go. Um, there's a couple of people online that will be able to answer them as well. Um, and if you have any other questions, feel free to ask them at the end as well. So let's get into here. So just a little bit about AST, if you're not aware, um, some of the things we do. So obviously we're a Bluebeam Gold Partner, Autodesk Gold Partner, uh, provide ESA antivirus software, Dropbox for Business, uh, Microsoft uh, hardware. We do Dell, HP and Lenovo, and we're an Apple authorised reseller. And then we have our professional services team, the Cad West Drafting Bureau, um, FM Systems, we're Facilities Management and Gold FMX as well. If you need any help or have any questions after today, uh, feel free to reach out to me on alex at advancedspatial.com.au or give us a call 1300-672-888. So today we're going to go through what's changing, when's it changing, what plans are available for you, what Ruby 21 looks like, what's in the cloud, um, and we'll have some time for some questions. So um, bear with me, we've got a bit of a few few information slides to go through um, and then I'll give you a bit of a hands on demo of, of what it all looks like. So. So just a quick disclaimer uh, from Bluebeam. Bluebeam's product strategy and roadmap reflects their current development priorities and general direction. It's shared for informational purposes only. Uh, the roadmap is subject to change at Bluebeam's discretion based on market and customer demand. The roadmap information is not a delivery commitment. It should not be used in making purchasing decisions or incorporating into contracts. Cool. So the first little section of this, uh, Bluebeam's vision. So uh, where they're going, what they want to do. So there's three themes to sort of their new model and what, what they're looking to do. Um, the main three are flexibility, control and innovation. So solutions must be accessible from anywhere, uh, from any device. It's been a big problem over the last few years with a lot of solutions that in the old sort of perpetual model, uh, software is locked to a device. It's not easy to work from home, work from anywhere. So um, we want the, the tools to have seamless data flow and interoperability securely um, and be able to scale based on project needs. Um, we have the ability to self-service and administer and manage licenses, uh, be able to effectively manage and assign and track the license usage and be able to report on that usage across your organisation so you can understand the unused entitlements, what's being used and everything like that. Um, and the last part is just innovation. So um, we're all quite aware that Bluebeam hasn't released a major version for a couple of years. So we want to be able to um, innovate a lot quicker and release the new features and products uh, um, in a lot, lot faster timeline. So what Bluebeam's heard from customers, really heavy and inconsistent releases. They break a lot, they're buggy. Um, it's very hard to manage the interoperability with other integrations and solutions. It's very hard to know and manage your internal usage and deployment. It's very time consuming to track it and where everything is. Um, it's hard to access from anywhere. It's very difficult to maintain security standards and original compliance and requirements. So Bluebeam's journey to software as a service, um, the key focus themes and so eventually they're looking at being a fully cloud and data centric portfolio. So you want to have new products, programs, and integrations solve market problems with an integrated cloud-based platform uh, with complementary programs and workflow applications. Uh, want to meet international security and compliance standards and have feature enhancements to improve collaboration, communication, and maximize user efficiency. Cool. So next part is just sort of what's changing the benefits for you guys um, when it's all happening as well. So typical subscription benefits we're used to with a lot of vendors now, um, low upfront costs, um, low cost to get started, shifts your investment from capital expenditure to operational expenditure, um, much faster product innovation, uh, faster development cycles, greater accessibility um, and improved security, being able to access from anywhere, things like SSO. Bluebeam's difference, sort of some of the additional things they're offering um, is a little bit of a comparative to other vendors. Um, really deep insights into product usage, being able to select the right plan levels based on what um, the usage insights that 
from you know, the, the users that are using it. Um, ease of use and onboarding um, through the extensive onboarding resources, the named user licensing model, reduces your administration costs quite a lot. Um, Bluebeam University, everyone will now get access to Bluebeam University, everyone with a subscription, um, which is a self-paced training course. Um, it's a really good onboarding tool for new users and gives you a sort of a good overview of what's actually available to you. Um, there's obviously so much that's in the software that not a lot of it gets touched. It's a really good way of learning about what those things are. Um, enhanced services, there's a new cloud-based offering which we'll touch on a little bit later. Um, and enhanced services, so there's geolocational insights as a part of that. User activity tracking and some revamped APIs for new integrations. And cost neutrality, so for existing customers, um, on maintenance with their perpetual licenses, be able to transition at a cost neutral rate um, and be able to continue using Ruby 20 until you're ready to uh, switch over. So the path um, when it's all sort of happening, so back in January this year, um, Bluebeam announced the um, overview and introduction to the software as a service model. They announced the end of sale for review 2019 earlier and the end of support for review 2019 and earlier, which will come in March 2023. Um, in September last month, they announced that the Bluebeam Cloud is officially launched. People can now buy new subscription licenses, um, transition existing maintenance seats to subscription when you're ready, or continue renewing the maintenance at this stage until um, next year um, at approximately a 10% increase. By Q3 next year, um, the idea is everyone will be completely migrated to the subscription model. Um, the official end of perpetual sales will come um, and they'll be on the path to the full SaaS platform. So the available options for existing customers, depending on sort of what licensing you are, have it, it depends. So obviously we've got perpetual licenses and open licenses. So for customers with perpetual licenses with maintenance, you'll be able to convert those over to the subscription um, at a cost neutral rate. So your renewal will be similar to what you pay normally for your maintenance renewal um, with a 10% increase year on year until it sort of goes up a, to match the, the subscription pricing. Um, if you have an open license, that will transition across to five named user licenses. So each one will trade in for five, um, give access to assign that up to five users. Um, obviously, if you do transition over, get access to the new cloud and mobile solutions with Bluebeam Cloud, the enhanced services, um, Bluebeam University, and obviously Review 21. Um, the other options you have at the moment is obviously to continue on the perpetual licenses or open licenses. Um, you can still add perpetual licenses until you do switch over um, as many as you need to. You'll continue to receive updates as they continue for review 20, uh, but maintenance will no longer be sold from Q3 next year. And the pricing incentive to migrate to subscription will be removed from Q3 next year. So in most people's, it's generally in your best interest to transition over um, before Q3 next year in terms of going forward continuously use Bluebeam at some point review 20 will no longer be supported as well at this stage it's likely to be in 2024 um, until then we don't really know so um, sort of got now until Q3 to look at transitioning when you're ready as well so review 21 subscription um, what it is how the plans work and everything like that so the value of it, you can access it anywhere, it has ease of use, it's simplified licensing, you can work remotely from home, the office, wherever you are, um, and continue to work under one named user login. Um, you can log into any computer, all your projects, your work, your tool chest, go across with you. So you don't have to worry about transferring things across your different computers, it all goes up with your login. Um, and then access to Bluebeam Cloud, which is a new alternative for collaboration and markup and design review. Um, you can use your existing markup tools, push your tool chests up to it. Um, it's a browser based app, works on any device. It doesn't require a desktop installation. You can use it on your Mac, you can use it on your Windows computer. It doesn't matter what you're on. And there's also an iOS app for it as well for some of the features to use on the field. So the value of Bluebeam subscriptions 
um, proof security, convenience, API and data access. So uh, you'll have access to single sign-on support for this will come early next year. Um, be able to integrate with your Active Directory so that users can leverage their um, company credentials to log in so you can enforce things like two-factor authentication, security standards and all that kind of stuff. Um, more broader API access, there's um, going to be a lot more APIs to integrate with third-party solutions, um, automate workflows between document management systems and all that kind of stuff. So the actual plans themselves, there's now three different plans. Obviously in the past we had standard, CAD and extreme. We've now got basics, core and complete. The way they split up is slightly different to the way it used to be. Um, basics essentially um, in terms of services and what it comes with, the next one will go more into features, but um, basics comes with just the desktop app without studio projects and sessions. Um, you can still attend sessions but not create them. Um, access to the Bloom Cloud Markup Editor, unlimited storage as part of that, um, access to integrations, access to university and technical support. Um, once you go up to core and complete, you add Studio to your desktop app, um, the field tools as well as RFIs and issues as part of Bloom in Cloud, um, and geolocational insights that you can use with those. Um, in terms of pricing, so um, this is obviously the new subscription pricing, not for transition licenses. Um, for new subscriptions, basics is 375 plus GST, core is 460 and complete is 610 per year. Um, that is done on an annual basis, um, that's billed annually. There's no monthly option at this stage. In terms of features, so Essentially, basics is, is quite simple. It's more back office kind of use, so um, has all the content management creation sort of stuff, um, PDF editing, creating office uh, PDFs from office files, PDF markups, um, hyperlinks, uh, toolbar application personalization, um, digital signatures, and it now adds OCR as well to the lowest version, which is cool. Um, integrations with SharePoint and project wires, and then basic measurements only length and area. Um, Core is probably where most um, sort of general users will sit in terms of what they use mostly. So it adds access to Studio, um, third party solution content creation. So the plugins for AutoCAD, Revit, uh, Navisworks, SolidWorks, and all that. Um, adds uh, markups to 3D PDFs and basic measurement and takeoff tools. So it adds all of pretty much all of the other measurement tools that you have access to count tools, volume tools, angle tools, all of that sort of stuff. Um, specialized markups, the capture tool, custom hatch patterns and sketch to scale, basic reporting, custom status creation and um, advanced document management, so sets and visual search, and it adds the overlay and compare functions for comparing documents. Then you go up to complete, complete adds advanced measurement tools, so it adds the dynamic fill, um, it adds the integration with Excel for quantity linking, um, doing takeoffs, it adds all the batch features for advanced sort of automations, batch digital signature, batch hyperlinks, slip sheeting, that kind of stuff. Um, for existing users, when you all, for like anyone that's on maintenance currently, when you convert over, you'll go to complete. So every license that you have currently, whether you're on standard CAD or extreme, will go over to complete. So you'll get access to everything, which is cool. Um, you can then use those insights in the future from what people are using and reporting on um, to then make decisions on what you need to obviously add in terms of what people will require. So then we get access to the markup editor. So this is part of Bluebeam Cloud. There's two parts to it, the markup editor and the field tool. So the markup editor, it's a very basic sort of markup tool, has access to text annotations, um, uh, call outs, clouds, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can customize them, change the colors, font, all that kind of stuff, same as you can on the desktop. You can push tool sets up to it from your desktop that have those markups that are supported in the cloud. Um, the sort of themes of, of the markup editor and what it's aimed for is productivity, collaboration, standardization, and portability. So you can move anywhere with it. It's very fast, it's very easy to use. And then we get access to the field tools. So the field tools um, allow you to manage RFIs, um, create issues or snag items, they call them in there. Um, you can do these from an iOS device. You can you know, be walking around a site. Um, drop a snag item, um, attach all the information, assign it to someone, take a picture um, and upload it straight to the drawing so it can go back to the office. 
let's be sort of amended as required. So now we'll go just quickly and I'll show you sort of what it all looks like. Um, let me just get up review. So review 21 desktop version, um, it looks as exactly the same as review 20. Only difference at the moment is instead of uh, registering with a serial number, you now have this sign in section um, where it'll tell you obviously your account server that you're in and what package you've got. Um, and you'll no longer see the register button under um, the review menu. Other than that, features wise, nothing has changed at this point um, in terms of added things. Obviously, the way it breaks up, depending on what plan you have access to, is slightly different, but the actual desktop app itself is pretty much the same. Um, the back end code has been revamped, so hopefully when they make re new releases, it doesn't break so much um, and we'll get a bit more consistency in use and, and stability. So in terms of Bluebeam Cloud, this is what it looks like. Um, you have access to two sort of sections to it. There's my workspace where you can now upload documents and mark them up privately just for yourself. So if you want to work in the cloud space but not have other team members as a part of it, you can do that in here. So you basically just upload files or drop them in here and we'll upload them. You can then mark them up in the cloud. Or you can go into this project section. So the projects, you create your own project or um, a project manager would create the project, for example. Um, you go into the project. And this is the sort of dashboard of it. So it'll show you some of the drawings. Um, you can add things like a location um, for your team, invite team members. It'll show you what snack items are active, what are overdue. You can create RFIs in there. Um, if you go into settings in here and in integrations, you can integrate um, a whole range of different um, document management systems, SharePoint, OneDrive, Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, Ignite, all of those. Um, in the project settings, you can set things like the, the address, project code, its name and all that kind of stuff. You can export it all from here as well. Um, under team here, you'll see that there's a few different options of how you can add people. So um, you can have different permission levels. So if you want someone to have full admin over the project, you make them an admin. They can just be a member, so they can mark up documents, create snag items, all that kind of stuff. Um, or they can just be a viewer, so they can only see it. They can't actually interact with it. So if I go into the drawings, I can click into one once it loads. So when you upload it, it will pick up things like um, the sheet number, sheet title, and all that kind of stuff um, using the, the features that come as part of it. So it auto sort of assigns that kind of thing, so it categorizes all of your documents, makes them easy to navigate and easy to find. Oh. So this is sort of what it looks like. So you get access to these basic sort of markup tools. There's a cloud tool pen tool, text box, an arrow, call out, a highlighter, and an image tool. And then you can play snag items and view a list of your RFIs as well. Um, you see this little tool chest icon at the top. It pulls up the default ones for you, and then you can also upload your own tool sets. So you'll see that the, the door item here isn't supported, so it comes up with a question mark. So only things that are actually supported in the markup editor will actually be able available to you. Um, obviously, it's a little bit limited in terms of what tools are there currently. Um, you'll see the future more things added to this. There's no measurement tools at the moment that will likely become a thing at some point. Um, you'll be able to access to more things in here, which will be great. Um, so essentially, it is just basic markup um, editing. There is no PDF editing in here. You can't, you know, raise content, move content, that kind of stuff. You need the desktop app for those sort of advanced tasks. Um, it's purely just for basic markups on the go, on the field, um, from any device. Um, you can see you can customize them, change the colors, all that kind of stuff. I can make it, you know, a blue outline, all these sorts of things, change my line style, change the opacity, and mess around with all that kind of stuff. And see up here, comments list, similar to your markups list. Um, you can see the details of the call out should be able to see who's doing it as well. I would think 
AST. And I think that's Ty in the background playing with that. Um, so you can see all that sort of information when it was created and everything. And then we've got the shape section, which is obviously the, the clouds and things like that that we're putting in. Uh, we can pull up a list of all the snag items as well. So if I drop an issue in here or a snag item, as they call it, we place this. I can say this is in, let's see, where's that? To this. Open office. Let's place that back in there. Set my location. Description of what it is. Let's say cracked wall. I can set its priority. So it's a high priority. It's due date next week. Assign it to tie. Let's see, drywall. And I can upload a photo to here as well. So I can go to my file here, find a photo of a cracked wall, upload that, um, and save that. I can also do this just from my iPhone or an iPad. Um, and I can obviously take the photo straight up with that, add it straight in, assign it to someone, and then someone back in the office can obviously play with that and, and fix it. Close that down. So now if I go back to my list of snag items, it should pop up with what's in here. Uh, so you can see it's open currently. Uh, we can set a status of it, close it off once it's done, all that kind of stuff. And then we can view the RFIs in here as well. So that is the Cloud Markup Editor. Um, can't really show the iPhone app at the moment. I haven't got it set up already. Um, but yeah, that's sort of how it works. It's overview um, and everything like that. I think. Cool. So that's pretty much it for in terms of the presentation. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to hit us with them. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. You can either drop them in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself and um, Feel free to unmute yourself and ask it if you have any questions as well. We'll hang around for a few minutes. There's probably a lot of questions in terms of the changes, what's happening. So, yeah, good day, Alex. It's Neil from Watercorp here. Hey, um, a quick question. Um, yeah. Uh, when you were going back to describing some of the features, mm -hmm. um, I sorry, I got a bit distracted. <laughs> the um, but you were describing. Uh, I'm not sure which one of those feature groups out of the, th uh, the three different um, levels of license. Uh, but I did hear you say something about the link that you could go to Navisworks, so linking to the Autodesk products. Yeah, so I didn't catch which group you said. Okay, so from Core and above, Core and Complete, they have um, plugins for AutoCAD, Revit, Navisworks. Okay. I think there's one for SolidWorks as well um, for PDF generation, so 2D and 3D PDF generation um, to come across um, and create sheets of the PDF sheets. Okay, cool. and um, just just want to add in as well. So if you are coming from a perpetual license to subscription, you are going straight to complete. So uh, you will have access to all the features available. Oh, okay, does that so? Um, yeah, most of our users. Oh, sorry, well, as you know, we've got uh, CAD and standard. So yeah. will all of the CAD licenses go to complete. Yeah. So yes. uh, yeah. So no matter what license you are coming on, either standard, CAD, or extreme, you will be moved to the complete version. Oh, okay, Kevin. And then um, you also mentioned something about we, where we can monitor. We'll just see what the usage is. So does that mean we could check and then possibly drop people down to core or basic? Okay, so uh, the first year, um, Bluebeam will give you the opportunity to, to explore all the features. On the second year, on request, uh, we can look at downgrading, but there's no uh, financial benefits if you are downgrading to core or basic because you're basically paying what's similar to what you're paying for um, maintenance price. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Neil. I've uh, just got a couple of questions in the chat as well. So um, someone asked the uh, Hamish asked to put the prices back up. So there you go. You've got the, the basics core and complete at the top there. So 375 is basics, 460 is core, complete is 610. Uh, James asks, can you share the snag items with people outside your team or do they need an account to access the snags? Um, 
So yes, they would need an account to be a part of the project. Um, you can have project members outside of your organisation. So you know, if you're working with other companies, you can all obviously be in the same project. It's not sort of restricted to an email domain or anything like that. Um, but yes, they would need an account. Um, and Amanda asked uh, which plan would you say is equivalent to the perpetual versions? Um, it's sort of it's a, it's a little bit different. There's not really any sort of I mean, complete is equivalent to extreme. Um, core is probably the closest to standard and CAD. Basics doesn't quite cover enough of what um, standard and CAD have to sort of be an equivalent. So generally as a minimum, if you're used to using most features in even the standard perpetual version, core is probably the most equivalent to it. Um, it is missing a couple of things, but um, yeah, it's it's probably the most equivalent in terms of extreme, obviously complete is the exact same. So. Ever asked, you said one perpetual gives you five cloud license. I think you might have mistaken that one. So um, currently in the old system, there's two types of licensing. There's perpetual licenses and there's open license. Open license is a floating license that um, it checks out of the system. So that's what I was talking about with that. The open licenses convert into five um, uh, named user licenses. Perpetual licenses with maintenance currently just go one for one and continue renewing at the discounted rate. I think Damon asking about the uh, last and changes made. So uh, yep. in the in the old system where we using the serial number, you activate and register the PC. Um, moving forward, it will be subscription based, so you can manage all those NAM user on the portal. So when someone's leave, you just unassign a license to them and assign the license to another new person. And uh, John just asked from the side, there doesn't appear to be any difference between core and complete. So that's in the services. In terms of services that come between the core and complete, they are the same. Um, the features are different. So that the yeah, there adds the advanced measurement tools, the dynamic fill, scripting, um, and advanced batch features and things like that. Can I just ask a question? I just want to make sure I'm understanding this correctly. Um, yep. We've got about 60 users currently paying $90 a week for maintenance. Sorry, $90 a year for maintenance. Mm -hmm. $15 a year for the enterprise licensing. Yep. So what that? 105. So for those 60 users to to stay on this beyond next year, the minimum I'm going to have to shell out is what 300 and no, your your existing licenses will transition across and you'll continue to renew at a, a cost neutral rate to what your maintenance renewal is. So um, yeah. it will increase 10% year on year um, yeah. until it sort of eventually gets closer to those the retail prices. All right. So, yeah, the, the idea is that you have a cost neutral transition. Yeah. The, so the, well, so yeah, the 370, what was it? 375 annual commitment for basics. That's what you pay for a, a new user that's currently not got a license? Correct, yeah. So uh, something to think about for everyone here as well is if you sort of think you may need to increase licenses in the next year or two years, um, it's a good idea to sort of evaluate that and add them before you do transition because it means ongoing you're going to pay a lot less um, because obviously if you add the perpetual licenses before, you know, you have that little bit more outlay, but ongoing you get that discounted renewal. So you'll end up a lot better off in terms of that. Um, just got a question from Claire. Um, is this cloud-based option or, or desktop on-premise option? So the desktop app will remain. So you, you still will have access to the desktop app. Um, the cloud uh, markup editor and everything is an additional thing that's coming onto it. Um, in terms of like review 20 and previous review 2019 and before is being discontinued from March. Sorry, the end of support from March um, next year. Uh, review 20 will continue to be supported until at least 2024, they've said at this stage. If that's not going to be supported anymore, there'll be an announcement at least a year, uh, 12 months in advance. Um, so we likely will expect that next year at some point. Um, 
but in terms of uh, the perpetual licenses eventually from Q3 next year, you won't be able to buy perpetual licenses anymore. But the actual desktop version will remain. It's just licensed as, as a subscription, um, named user subscription rather than a serial number. I think Ryan um, asking about the, the portal. So yes, so uh, who's who's ever the, um, the admin access in the old portal will also transfer to the new one. And from there, you can manage the, the user and be able to add in additional user um, to be the uh, admin if you like as well. Um, but there's a few things here we just want to make conf uh, to confirm with everyone that the benefits of moving to subscription is that you're paying for the similar price what you're paying for maintenance and it's got up by 10% each year. You're not paying for the uh, full subscription of um, what is on the slide earlier. That is only if you add new subscription um, or new license uh, moving forward. So um, very beneficial if you can forecast how many license you require um, in the next one or two years and add the perpetual license on with the maintenance so that when you switch to subscription you're paying that um, maintenance fee and is is actually more most cost effective moving forward just a follow-up question from Rowan as well um, if the admin leaves can we move the admin to another user yes you, you can um, if, if you don't have any other admins assigned already, um, we can get Bluebeam to change the, the access level in the background so that you have a, another admin. You're never going to lose access to everything in that sense. Are there any official Bluebeam slides or information you've got that you can show that, that do quote that um, ongoing maintenance cost for existing users once they're on subscription? Yeah, let me see if I can find, the, I think it's in the FAQ. Give me one sec, I'll do it in the background if Ty wants to answer any other questions that come through in time. Uh, okay, so John, John uh, asking whether, how is the docket management solution with core and complete? Is, uh, there's, no there's no difference between core and complete. So basically you still um, upload the documents into uh, studio projects and manage the documents from there. Does anyone have uh, any questions? I've got one more. Um, so yeah. if um, if you right, we've got a couple of users that are on Extreme, a couple of that are on CAD, but most of our organisation is on standard. So assuming everyone switches to subscription, then after the initial 12 months, are all users still on uh, complete or are they then switched back to basics? It's, it's always going to be complete and the pricing yeah. is what you're paying. So whatever you pay for standard is going to be what you're paying for the subscription moving forward. Um, so you know, you don't have to downgrade um, because yeah. there's still you know financial benefits for you to downgrade anyway. You're going to keep that price. Right. OK, that yeah. maintenance price. Sorry, can you yeah. can you hear me? I've just got a quick, quick question too. Yes, Damon. Yep. Yeah, um, in regards to the software, is it a, basically the software um, cover all three core, um, or is it core basics and complete? Or um, yeah. basically, if, if if they do downgrade in the future, would you have to uninstall the software, reinstall the basic version of the software? Or yeah, so it's, uh, yeah. it's the same software. Um, the only difference is when you log in, it, it determines what uh, subscription you plan you on and it turns on and off the features that's required. Okay. Um, there's also another benefits here and compare with the serial number activation is that um, a lot of things when it comes to managing the license, when someone leave or the mission has been wiped, you've got to unregister the license or um, uninstall the software. But moving forward, a, a single user will be able to lock, up, lock in up to five different uh, devices as long as the same person and be able to use the software. So if that person left, you just remove that user from the license. There's no need to go and unregister uh, like what you do with the old way. Okay. Like the existing subscription portal, the enterprise portal. Yes, um, it will. You have a more better uh, usage report in the new portal, um, and also anyone that's on enterprise licensing, you don't need to pay for the enterprise licensing anymore. It will be part of the um, uh, features, yeah. Uh, ben, 
yes, we will uh, share this recording with everyone. So one more question about the licensing. So, so you're saying it's a subscription model, um, but basically you're paying a one-off for a new user and then you're paying a maintenance per year for that user. Is that correct? Uh, so no. So the the one-off is only applied to those one that perpetualize and that moving to subscription. So if you were a brand new user today and you want a new license, yeah. that's the cost you've got to pay for on a yearly. So starting from 300 something for basic and $600 for the complete, that is the, uh, the price you're paying on, on an annual basis. So this is why we recommend that if you want to add more license in and be, you do it before you move to subscription. Okay, yeah. And um, it mentioned earlier that Q3 um, next year, so that is uh, July uh, 2023. So we we want to make sure you know we do proper planning and all that before you have now to July 1st 2023 to switch over. So during those times, if you're not ready, don't rush into uh, moving to subscription. Get all the user and all the add-in, uh, the license add-in first. And then from there, we can make the switch. Just going back to, I think it was Hamish's question quickly. So um, I just popped a screenshot in the chat from the FAQ. Um, that's available on Blue Beans website. I can post the link to that as well. Um, I can't find that there is more detail on it in another FAQ. I just need to track that down. Um, but yeah, it essentially goes on. It talks about the continuous renewal right in there. Um, Ebert just asked if we can trial first before you switch. Of course you can. I'll pop a link to a trial download for you in the chat as well. Feel free. Um, users just need to sign up um, to the trial. It's not quite as sort of simple as it used to be where you could just download and use as a trial because it needs the account to be activated. Um, so if you go to that link, you just fill out the details um, and it will basically create an account um, and allow you to, to download the trial. Um, just a couple of things to note with the trial. Um, if you, when you do go to log into the trial, all the trials are on the US server. So when the users go to log in um, to the software, they need to go onto the US server while they're using the trial. Um, when you actually get a license, you go to the AU server, but that's just sort of the system design at the moment. Um, but yeah. By all means, go ahead and have a trial and see how it works. And the ties just popped in there as well, the deployment guide and IT um, administration resources. I can get there's another link for this as well. Yeah, I think this this uh, deployment guide is quite useful. Um, it gives you a bit of an introductory, you know, what's, uh, what needs to be done. But just remember, we're always here to assist you guys. So, you know, if you're stuck or anything or want us to go through with you, uh, reach out to us and we can set up a meeting. Uh, just like one on one with a company to make sure that um, we are doing what we need to do. One more question. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. We've got a lot of, we've got 100 users on 2019 still, so they just yeah. tend to like that version. If we cut, if we cut over to that um, licensing today, tomorrow, whatever, does that stop them using that or will they still be able to use it and then we transition them over to the new licensing? Yeah, so um, they, this, this, the license will, will not stop working, but once you switch over, it will set your license to zero. So if you need to activate the license, it will not work anymore. Um, yeah. But if it crashes or anything like this, again, you know, uh, it will not be able to go back to the perpetual license. Um, a lot of people, they do the trial first, use the deployment, do some testing to make sure everything's all good. But um, one good thing about this is that review 20 and 21 is on a very similar platform. The only difference is the serial number versus the, um, the sign in. Thank you. No works. Um, Can I ask, uh, okay, so uh, we've got a question from Claire. I have a personal home use license as well, which was purchased a few years ago. Um, so I say if you purchased a few years ago, it, uh, if it's like review 20, uh, 2019 and below, um, they have and they have announced the end of support for this um, from March 2023. So if if your computer crashes or um, you need to reactivate the license from March 2023, it will not work. Mm -hmm. 
I think we had a, a question from someone earlier. Yeah, is it, can I ask uh, just the costing again? Like, I'm yeah. not, I haven't got 100 users or anything, but like, so I've got, I've got four users now, three extreme, one standard, and then I want to add another three users. So you, you're su suggesting I go purchase with you three more standard licenses with maintenance prior to Q3, and then um, and then after that, it's just the the, the maintenance for all seven users plus 10% yeah. every year after. Yeah, yeah. So so if you uh, if you have a mix of license, you might as well better go with standard. But yeah. let's say you've got 100 license of extreme, you better just go with the extreme to keep everything in the same place. Uh, and also you get a volume discount from the 50 license onward as well. So the standard license doesn't go over to the top end one next year. Is that what you're saying? If you switch from a standard to a subscription, you will go to complete. It to doesn't complete. matter what position you're coming from. You yeah. still complete. Yeah. So I'm best just buying the three standards and then going to complete. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No worries. Does anyone have any more questions? Just one final one. Someone may have asked this, but I, I was um, writing some notes at the time, so I might not have heard it all. Um, so when you have an older version, say one of the 2019 versions, uh, when they stop supporting it, you, it's not actually going to stop working, but just the maintenance won't work? Like you can still use the software if you bought it as a perpetual license, can't you? Yeah, so, so, so what happened? Okay, you go out. Okay, um, so it will continue working on the PC it's installed in. Um, yeah. If that, it won't be able to be activated again or moved yeah. to a different device. So, um, and it, you know, it will continue working to a point uh, where no more updates will be released. So let's say Windows yeah. releases an update that it's no longer compatible with and it crashes the software, yeah. it will no longer work basically. So um, something to keep in mind. But yes, theoretically it will continue working um, yeah. on the PC it's, it's on. Yeah. Okay. Um, Claire question in regards to the professional home use. Uh, so they discontinued that and have expanded because with the new subscription, you're able to log in multiple devices. So um, the professional home use license will no longer be valid. So it's just not required anymore. So you can log into, I think it's up to five devices um, with your named user license. So yeah. So you'll be able to use it at home, work, laptop, wherever you are. logged in at the same time? Uh, you shouldn't, shouldn't be able to use them at the same time, no. Not not concurrent use, it's you know, for a named user, so. Thanks. Okay, um, like with, uh, what we posted earlier, the deployment guide and um, the information on how to um, create a deployment for a larger user, but we also have a link on how to assign the uh, the user to the subscription. I'll post it onto here. It's for the Bluebeam subscription management guide. Uh, please follow this, but again, don't feel like you just need to uh, do this on your own. Reach out to us and leverage our support team as much as possible um, so that we can help you to do the migration. Um, there's a lot of way that you can connect to us. You can email, phone, or you can even chat on, on our website as well. We make it really easy for uh, accessibility and um, the way that you communicate with us so that uh, we can help you better. Does anyone else have any questions? Oh, yeah, we've got one more. Okay, so uh, similar to, uh, thanks Nikki. So basically once you switch over, the license will not stop. Um, so what you can do is maybe plan and use that deployment guide because the deployment guide will have a script in there that remove all previous version. Okay, so if you don't want to remove that yet, that's fine. You can install, once you switch over, you can have uh, review 21 and 20 side by side. Once that's working, you run the script and remove all the previous version of review 20 and below. Um, so in the deployment guide, uh, the actual package that, that you can download, they have a script that you can run to remove all previous version of Bluebin review.
just going to pop a link in the chat as well. Uh, we have a new uh, assistance portal um, that you can go on to and request support. Um, so feel free to jump on there at any time. It just asks you to put your name, email address, describe your issue, and it will, we'll jump on to the session with you and um, can help. It's another sort of way of accessing support. I think uh, someone is in the in front of a fan or something. Maybe you can please mute yourself. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm not sure if anyone else have any further question. I guess that's that's it. But uh, again, what I mentioned earlier, please feel free to reach out to us for um, you know any assistance uh, you require. Uh, and this is just a way for us to present the information, what changes to you, so you have a better plan on how you want to do it uh, and when you want to do it. And if anyone has any follow up questions, feel free to shoot them through as I'll just put my email in the chat. Uh, anyone doesn't have it already, um, feel free to reach out anytime. There's other, obviously it's a big change and lots of differences, so. Um, if you have any questions, just let us know. And we'll also send out a link to the recording of this once it's all processed and ready to go. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Ty. Have a great day. Thanks, Thanks guys. Alex. Thanks, Ty. Cheers. Thanks. See ya. Thanks.